wild brand that I hope you understand. Work hard, play hard, get up, stack bands. Time to get up, then slap your hands. Chilling in the club with all my friends. Living in the moment, hope it's never gonna end. Love a new beginning, but I skip to the end. I listen to the beat, I hope to ascend. I hope to cherish and I hope to win. And we are live. Chase? Chase What's going on? Thanks for coming on, bro. How you doing? Good, good. Um, been one of my best friends for years. Long time. I'm good. excited for this to happen. Just for context and stuff for people too, like real estate broker? Yes, sir. Just recently hit that? Yep, recently uh, acquired my real estate brokerage, uh, real estate broker license. Um, all agents are affiliate brokers. I'm now a broker and we'll be uh, Soon uh, opening up our own Columbia office of a new real estate brokerage. So nice. you got to stay tuned for that. So nice. a lot of cool things happening. Nice. Excited. Cool. Thank you again, like I said, for coming on. I know we've done this, it was like, what would we just say, five years ago? Five years ago. Yeah. If, if anyone wants to peep that, that's uh, if you go to Worthwhile's channel, we have an old, old Worthwhile interview, not a spotlight. Yeah. That we kind of did this before, but I feel like we've grown both and tremendously. Oh in, my you know, gosh spiritually physically uh you know career wise yeah i mean so it's wild but it's all another lifetime ago it, it feels like real. honestly for real i mean pre-covid <laughs> <laughs> uh so i mean how have you been though i mean how's how's everything with real estate markets been obviously through the roof and keeping sure. you busy sure how's that been here in columbia it's been great man um we are blessed with a super awesome local market overall in middle tennessee and it has reached a really great barrier uh, or a great bubble as it starts in nashville and it just expands out more and more and it has hit uh columbia murray county in the best way possible i mean obviously it does raise values which is good for the homeowner sometimes it's difficult for the buyer but we're in a super awesome market here would, what would you say like the number one like reason people are coming here outside of cost and like, you know, being better on taxes and stuff like that. I think it's the, on. I, I hear this all the time, it's the people. I mean, yeah. it really is. It's the it's the genuine people here that, you know, they are transparent, they're genuine. Um, and, you know, not to say that people in Brentwood and Nashville aren't, you know, but it just, uh, it still has a lot of big time uh, things to do. You know, all those things on the square, you know, the Southern Tray with taps, Southern Exposure, Puckets, clothing boutiques and stuff. They get that Franklin and Brentwood and Nashville and all those areas. They get a small, you know, taste of that as far as all the, you know, expensive stuff, the nice things. But then you still get the small town feel though. Yeah. It doesn't feel like big money, you know, corporation just out for your dollar. Like that's still local owned businesses yeah, here, definitely, not definitely. just franchises yeah. and chains, yeah. you know, so. I think I talked about it briefly with like Eric on this podcast, but like how like, it's funny how it's separate, like the square is like the local mom and pops, like the that influence, that vibe. Sure. And then like the South side's like the corporate side. Sure, <laughs> like, sure. And I think people, people are looking for that, you know, obviously Amazon, you know, as I seen the other day is accounts for almost like 50% of retails sales in america but right. yeah it's 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 a lot but i feel like people nowadays want to do that especially i mean talking about post covid they want to support the locals best they can you know because you know they'd rather see them succeed you know potentially than the billionaires and trillionaires that they're going to be okay regardless if they get their sell or not yeah, honestly 100%. so 100%. so Going back to your like real estate career, it's yep. been seven years? Seven years, yeah. This is, I believe this is year seven. I started, I was 18 years yeah. old. I mean, I graduated in May and went to real estate school in September and was licensed by December. So um, I really was truly active start of, you know, Jan January 1, 2015 and been selling real estate ever since. Here I am, just turned 26 in May. Um, so it's it's been a wild ride. It's been awesome. What would you say that, obviously doing it for seven years, well, there's some like key like components now that you've learned that you know there's like a clear difference like just growing up and like being in it sure um for one honesty and transparency always i mean you have to absolutely and people can pick up on it that's why if you are you know floating out a line of a of, of crap you know like they that people pick they up pick on up, it yeah, you know yeah. so just being honest and transparent backed with professionalism you know um and what I mean by that is, is know your industry, know your local industry, know your market, know your numbers, um, know what, you know, how to accurately price things and or negotiate things and, 
and just back that with the full trans transparency and honesty. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've told people I wouldn't buy this house. I, I really don't want to say this house. I don't think it's worth it. I don't think, you know, it's a good fit for you and your family, you know, and that goes a long way, yeah. you know, when, because obviously anybody that knows, I mean, real estate is commission based. So, you know, I don't make a penny until something closes, like closes. And that's not accepting a contract or anything. Like if I, if I wrote an offer for you today and it got accepted, I'm still not going to get paid for another 30, 45 days, yeah. not a dime, yeah. you know? So when you tell people, not to buy something for their for you, for what you professionally think is their best interest it really resonates you know because obviously i mean there's industries that you know get that bad rap and real estate is one of them you know um you know like mechanics and stuff too you know you always what's the first thing people people don't necessarily ask for the cheapest mechanic people ask for honest mechanics 100%, yeah. so that's what you want is an honest realtor you want you know honest representation when it comes to that because I mean, it's your biggest purchase of your life i mean you know, I so mean, for real, I mean, I haven't bought a house yet, so I can't, yeah, say we attempted, but <laughs> hey, we're working on it. We're yeah. working on it one day, one, one day. day. So, um, same time frame kind of vibe, like internally, I've obviously when you started when you're 18, like you've done a lot of personal growth. Like what are some things that you've had to not necessarily change, but like develop or like some hurdles in real estate, you know, whether it's being young and being around, you know, seasoned realtors or like you know whatever it may be like what are some things that had to evolve or you had to work on um i know it's probably quoted in every episode so far but it's honestly mindset um mm -hmm. the biggest thing about being a real estate agent is you're self you're self-employed i mean you're an independent contractor and one of my influences early in my career uh she told me you know you have to treat this like a job could i easily wake up every day at 10 a.m and you know and lay by the pool, take phone calls, and you know, sip on margaritas all day. I surely could, you know, but that's not going to get me nowhere. You have to get up, get dressed professionally, and <laughs> and you know, and establish that professional standard and work those hours. You know, go to work at eight, seven, six, whatever that may be. You can't just you can't just lollygag around. You have to treat it like a business. So honestly, even up until it was eighteen, nineteen, twenty really especially when i turned 21 you know it you you know you start to make that money and you know that's good money for that age you know and so kind of lack yeah you get bit. you get lax you're like you know the world's your oyster you know i could do whatever i've got money I don't, I don't need to work tomorrow no you need to yeah you have to treat it like a job so you know th that's one of the biggest things that i've had to learn along with um rejection you know, and that's that's part of business. You know, it was really tough, you know, whenever you lose clients for whatever reason or lose a sale and it terminates for whatever reason. Um, you know, I took that really hard because I'm competitive, honestly. That's what it really boils down to is passion based with competition or, you know, competitiveness, but I don't like losing. And so it naturally, I mean, it's just the way it's business. You know, deals will fall through. You know, you will potentially not get along with everybody. You know, you're not everybody's not your client even yeah. though that's that's what you want to do you want to win every situation but sometimes winning is actually walk, is better walking away you know do you think that you have more enjoyment like with and this isn't to like offend anybody by sure, but sure. like do you enjoy working with people you know or would you rather be someone that like kind of just calls you and be like hey i seen your you know instagram or something like that yeah that's actually a really great question because it honestly is 50 50. <laughs> it honestly is 50 50 because the the closest connections friends wise and family wise honestly probably eight to nine times out of ten are the most difficult <laughs> Fair. because because that that barrier of like professionalism yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. know they'll they'll call me late night early morning <laughs> yeah like it's no problem which in a sense it isn't but also too it's you know if the same way i just talked about treating it with honesty and stuff like that is you know if you have a friend that's wanting to sell their home and they think it's worth five hundred thousand dollars and clearly the market is telling me in in the form of comparables that it's worth 450 you know that's a tough conversation to have with a friend because you both have a mutual you know relationship and understanding respect love you know and so when you have to tell a friend that hey man your your house is not worth 50k more than you think it is you know um you know, it's that's a tough conversation when when money's involved. 
you know. So um, honestly, sometimes you know the stranger is almost kind of preferred, you know. But it's kind of, you, you it's do fresh. It's fresh. It's fresh, but. At the end of the day, when the transaction is done and closed, seeing your friends happy in that new home or selling that new property for the value that they want, that's the most rewarding though. I will say it's that. Fulfilling. It's you're, fulfilling. You're like, it's, it gives purpose. It's, it's even the like purpose. My parents. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's not get started on that. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not prepared to cry on camera, but no. Um, yeah. Ex great example of your parents. I mean, Especially that. I mean, there were there were definitely uh, speed bumps in the end that were out of all of our controls. Yeah. Mine, your parents, everything. And so, exa you're exactly right. So, you know, when that when those things started to happen, it was very frustrating for me because of the personal connection. Because all I wanted to do was be an absolute, you know, make it the smoothest yeah, possible. The, yeah, you know, yeah. show out the best, like to where like you look like Superman, you know, yeah. in the end and. You know, unfortunately things happen, but hopefully I think, and I do think so. I've talked to your mom and dad, obviously, you know, more since then. We got them in the house and stuff, and I still think, you know, they obviously think a lot, of, you know, a lot of me in the oh, transaction, right, but, yeah. but, you know, um, it was tough. It's tough when you have a personal connection like that, so. I hate to keep, like, bringing, like, a bunch of real sure, estate questions, sure. but, I mean, like, yeah. how important, and this kind of goes back to, like, the honesty and transparency thing you were talking about, but, like, how important is it to develop your own identity in in real estate oh. for for example you know a lot of people may know you in the beginning as like the bow tie boy but you had to yeah. hit a point of like i don't know like what, what, what was that transfer i mean you were like this isn't me yeah and now i have to be who i am and yeah. like i mean like you said you're chilling you're, you get the pfg on that's who you are yeah and i think that that goes back to the honesty and like it resonates with people more but like what was that what that look like that mindset switch sure so when i when i first got in the business at 18 like it i literally had no beard no beard whatsoever baby face, baby face. i literally still had braces on at, at for the first even six seven months uh, i always tell this story when i first got my first professional headshot i had a blazer that I bought at Kohl's the night before because I didn't even own one and it was like two sizes too big. So it looked like shoulder pads. That's where the and, brand came from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at 18, 19 years old with a baby face, like I looked like I was a solid 13 and a half years old, you know, trying to convince these adults to represent me selling them their hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of real estate property. I probably wouldn't have used me either. I mean, because I, I was fresh. I mean, you don't want a doctor working on you for the first time ever sure, yeah. <laughs> on a brain surgery. I get it. So I established uh, the Bowtie Boy uh, and, I, and, and my headshots and advertising logos and stuff like that because I tried to plant the seed of professionalism before I ever even arrived. Mm -hmm. And it was on all my advertising on social media, on my business cards. And because, I mean, a bow tie is professional, you know, it's professional, it's clean look, you know, it's a, you know, a fashion, you know, statement, I guess you could say, but that already implemented that before I got there. Whether I was wearing the bow tie there at, at not, it, it they just, seen it, yeah, yeah, yeah they've seen it on my business cards and the advertising and stuff like that. So that really, really, I think didn't necessarily catapult. I didn't just, you know, triple my business threefold just because I've started branding bow tie, yeah. but I, Definitely believe it was direct correlation of, you know, and then yes, it's with real estate. I think, I think now there's a total of like 13,000 agents mm. in middle Tennessee alone that's registered with our MLS. And so just in Tennessee, just in middle Tennessee, middle Tennessee. Yeah. Wow. I think I could be totally wrong. That could be a totally botched number. So don't, don't take, yeah. don't said, take no, that as, don't, yeah. Don't so, look it up. <laughs> yeah. Don't look it up, please. But, um, so when you have that much competition, there's only two sides to every transaction. Every transaction is only two, one who represents the seller, one who represents the buyer. So I mean, there's a lot of homes being sold, but still, I mean, that's, there's, there's, there's a lot there. of competition there. So you have to set yourself apart in any way, shape or form. Obviously you want to do it in the most positive and professional way. And I felt like that was a good way to do it. But in the end, it started to become almost like a character almost like a an alter ego in a an sense. alter ego you yeah had to be you had to be yeah 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 i had to be that and because i would show up in a pfg like this because it's 99 degrees like, in where's, tennessee where's the bow tie yeah it's yeah. 99 degrees in tennessee and you know where's the bow tie why are you not wearing a bow tie well for one i would probably die of heat of a heat stroke 
And two, like I, I genuinely didn't like wearing a tie every day. I loved wearing the bow tie. I love how it looked, and I felt good, you know, and I felt great, and you know, a, a new professional standard. But you know, it it become a thing of like, why are you not wearing the bow tie and stuff like that? And I actually was starting to even just be like called Bowtie Boy. Like not Chase, not Mr. Blanchard, not Chase Blanchard. It was just Bowtie Boy. And so, you know, people need to rec it's name recognition, yeah. you know, in this industry. And so that's Bowtie Boy, not Chase Blanchard. Yeah. And yeah, and obviously, I mean, boy is associated with it too, you know, and you want to try to set yourself as a grown up, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. we were talking around the time frame when you were wanting to switch. I feel like I remember like we were trying to like think of a way to like upgrade it. Yeah. Is that, is that bow tie man? Yeah. <laughs> bow tie, bow tie guy. Yeah. yeah. I did I did that. I did that for a while. So You did? Yeah. But yeah, just idea. a little bit. Oh, I mean okay. like it was very, very short lived. Bow tie. Like, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I need to get away from this altogether. So what, what got you into I was gonna I was honestly gonna ask the question, like if someone was trying to get into real estate, what advice would you give them? But like I'm not trying to saturate the market anymore. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That thirteen thousand, you know, number it's pretty impressive. One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what got you into real estate? I know from what I remember, I know like it had to do with around the time from with your mom. Yep. I think yep. like she was showing houses or. Yep. So my mom was what I would consider now uh, a buyer from hell. <laughs> we no, but we did. We looked at she was she was you know she knew what she wanted, but you know her budget necessarily didn't allow it, and it was needle and haystack situations, right? And so I think we looked for probably at least a year, if not a year and a half, maybe going on two. And I would go to her with every showing with our agent, and I really enjoyed it. I really loved seeing all the new houses and Did he have the layouts, tie? the properties. Do it. Did he have a bow tie? Didn't have a bow tie. Didn't have a bow tie. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, doing that, and then once I graduated, I knew I loved sales. I love sales and everything about marketing. Um, you know, taking all the marketing classes that I did in high school, I, I loved everything about that. Combined with, I love people more than anything. Like that's the number one priority for me. Uh, love for me is just people interaction and just people in general. That's just, I love, yeah. love people and yeah. I love to interact. And so combined with all of that, uh, our family friend that did sell us the house, um, I just, didn't really know where life was going to take me through after the summer I worked on our buddy Caleb's farm through the summer just for extra money and you know I was like where well, I don't know where life's going to take me so I, he always said I'd make a good agent and I you know to call him if I ever needed him and I called him one night randomly and we spoke for about two hours and next morning I woke up at 8 a.m. and bought my real estate course my own money and uh, put myself through real estate school and um, it'll rest is history yeah, yeah. seven years later yep is that something you want to stay in for a while? Oh yeah. I mean, I'll never, you know, I'll never get outside of real estate. I'll always carry a license of some well, kind. Cause it's and, something you can kind of do on the side. Yeah. I mean, well, and, yeah. I mean, and you look at all the millionaires out here and the social influencers and, you know, the people that write books, you know, that, you know, besides the stock market, you know, real estate is the number one way to grow, grow passive income wealth, mm. you know, in the form of rentals, uh, leases, you know, flip properties, anything. So there's just a multitude of ways to earn income, both passive, um, whatever the other one is, you know, income, you know, uh, and so I'll always be in the game. I don't think, matter of fact, I don't think I'll ever actually step outside of either representing buyers and sellers, being a broker, whether that even means, you know, one day that I, I'm a broker of, you know, so many agents to where I stop actually actively selling and I just focus on agent growth and productivity, or, I mean, Sky's the limit. I mean, just keep going and maybe, you know, help open up real estate offices, work the back end of the executive side, you know, but I, I do genuinely enjoy real estate because without, you can't do real estate without people. And so people is always going to be the root of that. So, and that's what I love the most. Yeah. I feel like that's <laughs> kind of towards me a little bit. Kind of yeah. Everybody, everybody here right now. Like, yeah, absolutely. What would, uh, some turning points in real estate and personal life over the, the time frame that you've been been at it uh some turning points negative or positive yeah yeah um i'd say some turning points is when um it goes back to working when i talked about working and treating it like a full-time job when i bought my house um it needed to have work done on it and which was just cosmetic stuff and i planned to do all that myself and i did 
but you know a two week project turned into three months and you know you budget x amount of dollars and we blew past that you know and i got into a real bad slump both personally and and business wise to where you know my mindset wasn't there i you know i slept in every day i stayed up late playing video games not not you know working my business not making calls and and stuff like that and i'd reached a i'd reached a bad point you know of just productivity and honestly even mindset you know and i wouldn't say i don't want to say depression because that's a you know a harsh word but it felt like it borderline and i didn't really know how to get out of it and you know i just honestly just one day it was like this this is enough you know when you have you know just you know a hundred bucks to your name and you've got your mortgage payment coming up in the next five days i've been there you know i've been there i've had 20 bucks to my name with you know hundreds of dollars of bills you know coming up and i've had to do last minute jobs i don't care if it was shoveling crap i, I did it to make extra cash and you know that that'll teach you that'll that'll humble you real quick of like all right i see what it's like to not work you know it's real you can't just wake up and and money just magically hit your bank account you can't just wake up and sales magically be there yeah. you know you have to work and that that was end of 19 um going into 20 so right before covid too of course um and yeah and like covid hit and that was my best year ever it was really? one of my best years ever when covid hit because of that you know of that switch you know i i had your, your personal switch or like the COVID? yeah switch? no my personal switch okay. of like all right let's put our big boy pants on let's go back to work yeah you know no what, more what was like some struggles during covid that you had to because i mean i feel like that that was probably a i don't think we've ever talked about that i mean as close as we are i don't think yeah. i ever asked like your, your COVID experience with real estate i mean it honestly didn't really i mean mask you never and, you never checked up i mean there were a couple showings that would require you know, uh, mask and, and, and stuff like that. But honestly, for the most part here, I mean, we had an additional form to sign. There was a COVID-19 form <laughs> that everyone had to sign. But other than that, it didn't, uh, it really, it really propelled, you know, the real estate industry. And that's actually- Why do you think that is? That's, I was about to so say, good. this is actually really interesting because it honestly propelled the real estate industry a lot because for one, they had to, they dropped, you know, the interest rates were at a record low. Because you had to. Borrowing yeah. money yeah. was just so cheap. Yeah. You, I, I've, I've represented, I represented investors and stuff like that that had millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And they would buy the, one of my properties that I represented from another seller and they would purposely get a loan because why spend four hundred thousand dollars of their cash when they can borrow it at two point eight percent? It's so cheap. That's why we're in the problem that we're in now. Honestly, yeah. though, you know, because it created that inflation of the dollar bill. Uh, but with COVID, it propelled the real estate market in the way of when you were quarantined inside. You know, you either realized how much you loved your home or how much you hated your home <laughs> when you were stuck in it for three or four months. Yeah. You know, you realize, oh man, our our kitchen's really small now that I think about it because, you know, or, you know, we got too much room. We're just wasting space up here. And money. Yeah. You know, and money. And so, yeah, it, it actually, it, it reflected a lot in the fact of people either sold because they needed to downsize or people bought because, you know, of people working from home and need a new home office. Um, you know, uh, COVID babies are a thing, you know, you, they brought on new children and, you know, they seen that, you know, that they didn't have enough room anymore. Yeah. Um, so it actually, I mean, from my, from my point of view was actually a big propeller of the real estate industry. I mean, my last two years have been record years for me and my personal production. So congratulations. On yeah. That. That's wild though. Cause I never really, whatever thought about that. Yeah. I mean, my, my personal COVID time frame was just a lot of like, know self-reflection and like reading and like working out and meditating at home because i mean you know i was working at southern trade at the time so yeah it's like, like so, yeah I mean, industries like the restaurant industry i mean they they were just you had no choice no. they just oh, closed yeah. yeah which was unfortunate but yeah i mean people still needed housing you know and yeah were there precautions that we did take on some absolutely but at the end of the day you can't just shut them down basically too we were deemed one of the uh what do you call it back like they were essential we were deemed an essential worker 
too. Oh, real okay. estate agents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like we were one of the very, you know, there was like a select 15, 20 career yeah, fields. Like grocery stores. Like yeah. We were deemed essential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense though. Kinda yeah. Need that to be. Yeah. yeah. You There's need housing. Something about the like money aspect you were saying, how like people could go borrow $400,000 for 2%. And like, yeah. instead of using your own money, it's funny because I just seen this random like post on Facebook. It's more like a meme photo, but it wasn't a meme. But it was just like picture, and this guy had parked like his really expensive like I don't want to say it was a Rolls Royce, but it was one of the very expensive cars. Yeah. And he had to go on this trip, and he went to a hotel, and there he wanted to, like, hey, how much to get a room here for like three days? And then he literally got the room and left. Got a Uber to the airport. And then they were like, that's weird. Like, why? Why? Yeah. Like, they parked his car in the garage or whatever, looked him up. He was a, like a billionaire. But he came back and they were like, we looked you up. And like, why? Why are you? Why did you yeah. choose to park here instead of like here? And he was like, why pay for a parking garage here when I could leave it here for $17 versus like, you see, it's absolutely. the comparison and it's being money conscious and money smart. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, um, with the COVID growth, I mean, it, it's, it's, we're now honestly seeing kind of the, the crappy end of it now here in June 22, uh, 2022 with the interest rate hikes and stuff like that from those low interest rates that we had. But, you know, it's an ongoing process. And, you know, uh, honestly, it's, it's at a point to where, you know, I hate to say this, but it will weed out the weak as far as the strong will survive, as far as real estate agents and stuff like that, as far as newcomers. And stuff. There, there's probably a huge wave. Oh. Uh, there, yeah, there was. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you that right now. It's just from yeah. people I see on social media. Did that like move you in any sort of way? Just because like you've already were in it at like you know 18, and then all of a sudden it's like this market explodes, and everyone's like, I want to be a real estate agent. Sure, sure. You know, I probably was a part of that. I bet people probably said that about me whenever I got in at 15, you know, because it was really just starting to up uptake from the 2008 recession. Um, it was just really starting to catch flame in 12, 13, 14, and really starting to uh, ascend. So they probably said that about me at the time, but yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to tell you as simple as I can. If you could breathe, type on a computer, and it's somewhat talked to somebody in the last two years, you could you could pretty much sell at least a house or two. I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. And anybody that disagrees with me in the real estate industry, I'd, I'd love to have a chat with you, you know? <laughs> you should have them on the pod. I mean, That's honestly, true. but uh, you know, with that being said, yes, I mean, when the market was so amazing, you know, as far as values, sales, record, number of homes sold, it's gonna naturally bring more competition. And it's, you know, um, so people that got into the industry in the last two years, they had it so well. They didn't come from, you know, experience in somewhat down times. I've, I've never experienced a bad market. Let me put that out there clearly. Fair. Since 2015, I've never experienced a bad market. I didn't experience 2008, 2009. Yeah. But, you know, these people that have been in the last two years, you know, they've only experienced the absolute extreme highs. Yeah. yeah, so now that it's calmed down, even the slightest bit, I mean, people are freaking out, you know? And do you think it's gonna plateau or go down? It's definitely, gonna, I mean, it's gonna do a little bit of both. I mean, it's, it's 100% gonna plateau. Uh, and then with the interest rates literally doubling, you know, from 3% average, three and a quarter, to, you know, six, six and a quarter, it's definitely going to uh, bring the home values down in a way like, the home values in the last two years were at almost a 90 degree angle. Like the values were just going at a, at a rate like that. And now you're gonna see them just go right here. And then they're gonna level and then they're gonna dip and they're gonna level. It's like stock market. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's honestly healthy. Like what people don't realize, yeah. that's a healthy market. Yeah. It, you know, a healthy real estate market took two to three, four weeks maximum to sell a home. That was a real, like if you, back in my day, if you got a contract on a home in under 30 days, you were a good agent. You did your you did your job right. You marketed right. You did your calls. You know you did your job well. You know in the last two years, you stuck a home on the market. You have sixty showings in the first two days and fifteen offers to choose from. You know, and so when when that changes, people don't know how to handle it. Like they they think the, the world's crashing. You know, but no, we're getting back to a normal market. You know, my, I bought my house three years ago. You know. 
around that time, and it's doubled in value. Double. It shouldn't have doubled in value. It really shouldn't have. You know, should it have increased maybe 30%, 40%, maybe 50 Sure, but not double. Yeah. And so now that these values have hit a peak slash plateau, what we talk about, but the interest rates have taken a 90-degree turn upwards and doubled, now you have people that their buying power has been greatly reduced. So just because your house is worth 400000 now doesn't mean somebody's going to be able to afford it, mm. you know? You know, I, I, I say it a lot like, a, like an old car. You know, you've got a 2007 truck, right, and it's got 50,000 miles on it. That's unheard of. You know, it's well-kept. It's in rare condition. You know, somebody might want to ask $30,000 for that truck. Is that what, truck worth $30,000? No. Would somebody potentially buy it for $30,000? Maybe, you know, but it's not worth it, you know. And so now your home is, is, has peaked to this level, you know, because of the values in the last two years. It's just... And now, but the interest rates have doubled, the buying power is greatly reduced. Not to say your home isn't worth forty thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars no more, but you know, it's the buying power. And so we have to be subconscious of that. And that what goes back to weeding out the weak, weak yeah. and the strong will survive. The people who are professional, who treat it right, who treat it like a job, go to work every day, uh, and set a good professional standard. It's our job now, and it's and it's good. The ball has been placed back in the, in the agent's court, in the broker's court, of we have to do our jobs and set that professional standard. We have to educate our buyers and sellers and tell them what the, you know, what, what, because the thing what is, we, really have, we have professional opinions, yeah. and all they are is exactly what I just said, professional, professional opinion. opinions. But when we present you comparables, those are black and white numbers that are market numbers. You can't argue with that. I mean, that's the numbers. And so when you start to see declines and stuff, I mean, I understand your neighbor down the street sold their house for $50,000 over asking price six months ago, but that's not the market no more. Yeah. It's just not. So you have to price it strategically, you know? Um, you have to list it com you know, competitively, you know? So that's our jobs now as agents is to educate and not just, you know, whenever I go to you and you say, well, I want $450,000 when clearly it's worth, you know, 400,000 right now, at you know, just spitting out random about numbers, you know, I could easily say, yep, let's go to your number, 450, let's do it. Put a sign on the yard and, that just and all keeps, that. That, keeps that, that just keeps it, happening. yeah, it keeps the same thing happening. And then what's gonna happen, potentially, is that your house is gonna sit on the market for 30, 45, 60 days, and then someone brave enough, representing a buyer, is gonna throw you a low ball offer of 380, and depending on your level of seriousness with selling or your thought process, if you have to relocate to California next 30 days, you're probably going to take that 380 offer. No, 100%. You know? And then you're going to... It's but if you would have listed at 400 to begin with or even 390, you probably would have got 390 within the first two weeks. Yeah. So you're really just hurting yourself. So you feel like you let... Like if you listed at 450 and you, list, and you sell for 380, you know, you feel like you just lost on 70K worth of equity. But you didn't. No, because you never really had it Because it, it never would have sold for four fifty. So now you list, you know, your home is worth four hundred thousand. You list at three ninety, three ninety five, three eighty five, and now you know you feel like instead of seeing that you gained, you know, you only lost if you sell at three ninety five. You don't feel like you lost five grand. Feel like you gained fifteen grand because you probably would have got a three eighty three eighty offer if it yeah. was set on the market for three forty five. Yeah. You know, 40, 30, 45 days. Then your mindset's like, oh, it's not selling, so I gotta take it for less. Sure, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not selling, I gotta take less, it's funny, and that's what buyers say. It comes back to mindset. Yep, really. yep. Switching exactly. gears, sure. What's the what's self worth mean to you? Just dive straight into the, yeah. the worthwhile meaning. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, worthwhile is not, not necessarily worthwhile, but just like the definition of self worth. It's always like it's a different perspective for everybody, and it's something I feel like that you have to develop. Sure. And then once you do develop it, it's a battle to keep it. It's sure. not easy, I mean, but for you. Yeah, self-worth, um, I wasn't prepared for that. I was prepared for the worthwhile uh, question. Uh, yeah, but I, self -worth, I switched gears. Yeah, like, you did. <laughs> uh, the self-worth, um, man, you know, I've been through a lot in the last couple months. And um, with the loss, you know, of my daughter and, and, and real estate starting, you know, and rejection that I've handled, success that I've handled, and, you know, religious battles within myself, spiritual battles, and, you know, 
mindset battles. So self-worth is, is very important. You know, something I didn't take seriously even in the last two or three years, you know, because if you can't be the best version of yourself and lo like know what you're worth far as a husband, a brother, a son, a father, you know, you can't, you can't invoke that into other people. And per, you know, my, my purpose is, I feel like I just want to, I always want to change lives for the better, you know? And if I can't recognize my own self-worth, how can I try to, you know, help a brother, help a daughter, be a father to her, be a husband to my wife, you know, be a broker to agents, you know, and try to lead them on a path that, you know, in a, in a positive way. So, you know, if you have to find it in yourself and I, you know, me and you, you actually took me on my first self guided meditation. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I told you, I mean, it's the cliche thing you see on movies and stuff like that. And TV shows like the, you know, meditation is, mm, no, it's, it's, you know, one, that, that was a great experience. And, you know, doing that, it's, it's amazing, like meditation. So, so that really had an impact yes. that time frame did? Mainly because, yes, and, and, and mainly because there's so much going on in this world, you know, both positive and negative. Honestly, the negative far outweigh the positive. Oh, yeah. That's, you know, that's on media, day to day, some people's attitudes towards you. Um, when you're able to shut everything off, that's the most power. Like, that's powerful. And when you're able to shut everything off, focus on yourself, you're able to find that self-worth. And then once you find that, and you're confident in your ability, your spirit, your spirituality, you know, your abilities and your profession, you know, and then your ability to bring positive energy to other people, your ability to be the best husband, the best son, the best brother, the best friend, you know, I feel like it, it just relishes. It's just like a, a glow that just relishes to other people and you just don't know what other people are going through or what they've been through. And you don't know what you can say with your own, you know, words that might impact somebody's life greatly. Like, it's greatly. Why it's always good to be positive. And yep. like, I mean, the way you treat and talk to people is a reflection of how you treat and talk to yourself. Sure. So like, if you're not sure. in tune and, and know your worth, then you don't care if this person's worthwhile or not. And like, no pun intended towards the brand, but just sure. in general, um, you, you'd never meditated before that time, right? Nope. Not, not once. Sorry. Yeah. Really so, my mouth. you know, um, you know, that, that process definitely was, you know, and it's again, you know, with real estate, it can be high stress. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on, timelines, dates, just like anybody else's job can be high stress, you know? So when you're able to, to step tune, away step away that's super and i don't think people do that enough no they think they do that potentially with a pool day or like you know, i want to go sit down and scroll for 10 20 minutes yeah like, yeah they think that's, that's relaxing alone, alone time yeah it's yeah. alone time no that's not no no it's just distractions you know uh cracking i'm the I'm first one i love a good cold beer but you know mickey's yeah yeah <laughs> the mickey's but uh you know a pool day or, or something by yourself just out there you know, or, you know, that, that's just distractions, yeah. you know, until you sit in an environment, you know, and process your, thoughts. process your thoughts, yeah. process your feelings, you know, that's um, a, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Cause that's, that's, there's, that's two different things. Your thoughts definitely. and your feelings are completely different. Sure. And I personally have been learning to try and feel, I mean, you've yep. known, you've known me for a long time and like, yep. I would I thought that I was intuitive and like I knew myself, but like we're here recently, I'm like, I think a lot, like I overthink, you know that. Yeah, you know, yeah you're an overthinker. <laughs> you know that, yeah. I mean, I've, we've talked about so many things over the years and I thought, it's like, it's weird, but like I thought that I knew that. Yeah. And it's like the more I'm like realizing, like I, I don't really listen to my intuition. Like when these feelings happen, I'm like, I, I overthink, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing this right? Or should I be doing this? And it takes that consciousness of like I need to focus and feel sure how I feel about this is a difference between I think and I feel sure sure and that's that's a great point and like with um, feelings versus thoughts like you know 
since everything has happened, like I thought I'm in a good place. I, mm. I you know, I, I, I tell myself and I think to myself, oh, I'm in a good place, uh, you know, and I, and I am, you know. And, but one thing that's really powerful that goes without saying is music, to me, mm. personally. Music has such an, an amazing impact, both positive and negatively, but music allows you to feel. Music allows you to feel, 100%. and so when I wake up and I think to myself, I'm gonna, my thought process is I'm gonna have a great positive day, there's gonna be no negatives today, we're gonna crush goals, we're gonna succeed, I'm gonna do this, you know, and then... Pop in some Motley Crue. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, you <laughs> pop in some Motley Crue and you're feeling it, right? But if, if something comes up and, you know, in a sad manner or, yeah. you know, or something like that, or something that speaks to your situation, you know, much like mine that I've went through, you know, it can make you feel, you know, it can make you feel. And next thing you know, you're going down 31, crying your eyes out underneath your, your sunglasses. But it's good though. But that's, it's, a, that's emotion. Yes, and that's it. And it's yeah, feel. Yeah, like you're yeah. able to feel it because yeah. my thought process told myself not to feel it. It was there. It, but, you know, my thought process is like, you're okay. Only you're good, okay. only you're good vibes. Good. Only good, good vibes. Yeah. No, no bad. You know, but you have to feel that. You know, you have to feel that. So, you know, when you when that certain song comes on and it just speaks to you, you know, it, it makes you feel, you know, so. What uh, what song was it that got you? Um, so one of the one of the uh, new songs. I know this is gonna sound so cliche, but <laughs> um, Morgan Wallen, right? So Morgan Wallen's "Thought You Should Know," um, you know, it was written about his mother, you know, and it and it was released on Mother's Day weekend. Okay. which is actually the first weekend that Everly was born. So I was in the hospital and I would listen to it a lot on my AirPods, just kind of walking around, taking a break. And um, because it was a new wall. And yeah, new because it was, it was just a new release, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was talking about Mother's Day, which I mean, Lexi, you know, my wife, we literally spent Mother's Day in the hospital, you know, because she was still recovering from, from surgery. So, you know, that, that speaks to me a lot. And um, honestly, his, Again, his other song, um, uh, it's not the exact title, but I don't think Jesus does it that way. Um, yeah, yeah, you might, you might, you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> I think it's called That Way or, or Jesus Does That Way. Um, and he speaks about, you know, all the mistakes that he makes and, you know, why would he give heaven to him even though he's made all these mistakes? And it talks about, you know, that's why you know, you know, the, you know, if you believe in, in that religion and stuff and, and that faith, you know, it talks about even though you make mistakes that, you know, that's what he was sent for, you know, and, you know, talking about it, um, I know that I'm not a perfect human, you know, I've made mistakes and, you know, one of the taglines is, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the lyrics. Uh, it says, you know, to hell with you, you know, uh, if I was him talking about Jesus, he's like, you know, I would thank the hell with you. Why would I give you heaven, um, you know, and give it to somebody else, you know, and I think about my daughter, you know, um, as she passed away and, and in heaven. And it's like, I think to myself the mistakes that I made and it's like, you know, it's just kind of self-reflective and I'm like, you know, is this, am I paying for this? You know, and I, and I know that's not the right way to feel, you know, but it definitely makes you feel a certain way, mm. you know, that, um, is, you know, so, but in the, in the end, you know, that's good that I get those feelings out and I'm, I'm able to, you know, be one with that. And, you know, so, but going to church now more and stuff like that and diving deep into my spiritual and my faith, you know, um, really helps that out, you know. So, and again, that runs all the way full circle back to self-worth, you know. So. Yeah. Uh, do you, you think it, like, that, like what had happened was kind of like, a, like a, a, a shock in a sense of like. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how exactly to word that, but like a real, not a realization, but like, I don't, I, you know what I'm trying to say? Sure. Like, I mean, you know. Again, I told you I was prepared for the worthwhile question, not the self-worth. Um, oh, you were, no. <laughs> yeah, so, like, it really teaches you about life. Mm. Life is worthwhile. 
you know, there's, there's nothing, and the people that are in it, you know, is worthwhile. You know, I was actually going to make a joke and say the Titans are worthwhile, but, <laughs> but you know, life, life, all of life is worthwhile life because it's so precious. Yeah. You know, that experience is, it's taught me so much that, you know, if you order a coffee hot and it comes out cold, you know, most of the time you'd be upset. It doesn't matter. You still have your life. Yeah. You know, you're running 30 minutes late for work. Your boss might care, <laughs> but doesn't matter. None of that matters. I lose a real estate transaction due to something that's out of my control. It doesn't matter. You know, life is what matters and the, and the gift that we have day to day because it's so short. You yeah. know, we don't know what's guaranteed. So, you know, that to me was the eye opening and even to like becoming a broker, becoming a broker in real estate that when one of the first piece of advice I got the other day from, um, from another broker is that he teaches everybody like, it's okay. Nobody's gonna die. Nobody's gonna die in this real estate transaction. Like, it's okay, let's take deep breaths, let's handle it and let's find a solution. I mean, I mean that is true. I mean, you know, with, with realizing about that and value in life so much, you know, it, um, it, it speaks to you in the way of, no matter what happens in real estate, like I can handle it. Like, you know, and I'm, I can get pretty fired up. I can get pretty passionate, you know, and um, it just teaches you like, hey, like, it's okay. Yeah. Like, we're, yeah. we'll find a solution. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. You know, so that, you know, because I was, I was nervous becoming a broker thinking, I've got to handle some potentially aggressive, hostile situations uh, that involve money and two upset, you know, parties and stuff like that. But with now that mindset of value in life to that degree, it's like, okay, what's going on? You know, talk to me, you know, Classic. Hey, what's, what's happening? You know, yeah. because nothing else matters. Yeah. None of it matters. You know, would you, so this is, I just had a conversation with, uh, you know, Noah, uh, literally yesterday on the topic of faith and we're, the, our conclusion of it was that like, you know, I feel like we all start with a, a faith and a strong faith and obviously we all go through life and there's ups and downs and maybe you stray away from that or you learn sure. more about it, whatever it may be. Sure. But like in the m most ways, unexpected and unexplainable ways, God tests you the most yeah. in your faith before the next stage or whatever it may be. Did you, did you battle with the test of faith or did it bring you closer? Sure. I absolutely battle with it. You know, the test of it, you know, because for one, you know, um, that's even alludes back to that song and why it's so emotional for me uh, because it's like why you know you 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 want to question why because it's I mean it hurts you know it's it hurts human, it's human nature to want to understand yeah, to want to understand yeah. yeah I mean it's like why why did you do this this is not what you're supposed to do yeah. you know you sent your only son for us that way we can live in this prosperous life and have an eternal life I get that but why you know and but um, you know like diving into it though and realizing the true meaning and stuff like that and there's there is a reason you know you have to believe in this and that um there is struggles with it absolutely and when you stray away you know it's easy to do that you know it's easy to walk away like we just it's were easy, about. Yep, yeah, it's, it's easy to just open up tiktok it's easy not to go you know it's easy to just shut it off but when times are bad yeah. you know like that situation i mean who did I turn to? Why am I just turning to it when it's bad? Yeah. You know, it's, it's knowing the good, knowing the bad and knowing the why and, 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 and following that. And it's like choosing the hard part, which is to show up, which is to believe, which is to read, which is to, you know, understand that's the good hard part. You know, it's easy to walk away yeah. and just distract and forget it and say, you know, I'm not believing this week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm not believing this week, you know. But, you know, the the thing that takes effort but the most reward, you know, is to understand believe. and believe. I think that, you know, just tying it back to like God in the sense like we were made in that image. So like believing in yourself is essentially I feel like believing with the Christ within you and that that moves mountains. Yeah. It's the seed parable. Sure. I mean, like, Sure. Put that seed on a moving mountain. Is it a mustard seed? I don't know. 
I can't. I'm not that yeah, quotable I'm not, with I'm it. I'm not that indulged, for sure. <laughs> but, but for real, I mean, thank you for sharing that, because, I mean, I know yeah. that it obviously pulls strings sure. and not easy to talk about. Sure. But I do I mean, feel like that there's the relatability that's out there for somebody that, you know, may it's a, ha- experience yeah. that or, you know, have it, has experienced it. Yeah, and I, I know I probably boshed a little bit of even the quotes from that Morgan Wallen song and stuff like that, but, I mean, that's a real thing is, like, you know, just having those feelings, and you don't know what people have been through. No. You know, when all. you experience, like, people all experience loss in all different ways. And so, yeah, if I can help, you know, one person, you know, that's, you know, somebody helped me along the way, and somebody's helped my wife, you know, and, and their advice, you know. So if I can do that, that's that's the game changer. So, you know, and you got to get to a good place, though. you got to get to a good place of peace, you know, in your spirit and your, in your health and everything. If you're ready to share that. And, I, of course, I am, obviously. And uh, it's all about that circles back to me loving people and wanting to help them. So if I can help somebody else, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. Mm. So, well. As a friend and one of your best friends, I will say, like, I'm proud of you for just, like, the man that you've become that I've known sure. and the strength that you have internally. I mean, work ethic, family, like, drive, everything, and yeah. you're an inspiration to me. Oh, so, no, I, mean, I appreciate you that. Make you tear up. Well, Absolutely. I'm, I'm gonna tear up a little yeah. bit. I'm just emotional. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want everyone to succeed, man. I mean, that's, and that's, to me, that's, uh, that's another thing. Sorry, I kind of getting yeah. a little off stray. That's another thing I really learned quickly. Uh, in real estate is that you want to surround yourselves like because you know real estate is a cutthroat industry let's let's say what it is you know but the good 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 agents there's going to be agents that will always you know get business because they have money or they they can buy leads or you know anything like that and I get that but to me the real good agents and the people you want on your team you know is that handshake that they want the success for you just as bad as they want success you know it's it's a that t- care yeah like it goes full circle we go I, a lot of like, full circles yeah but caring just, about people yeah so just like you want me to succeed and and I appreciate those words thank you but I'm so proud of you and what I mean we're sitting here in this nice studio recording this you know thing and if people go back and look at that YouTube video of our first interview it's come a long way yes. it's come a long way really so has. you know I I want you to succeed and 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 to me. I feel like, I mean, there's definitely your Wolf on Wall Street, right? Shout out, I love that movie so much. It's great. But, <laughs> but the, I think the people that are the most successful and the most fulfilling and purposefully happy, like, because you can be successful and rich and be the most miserable person. You can be lacking in here. You're lacking you in here. The people, here. Yeah. Yeah, the people who have it all, including the wealth and including the purpose, they bring people with them. Mm. You know, they bring people with them. It's not just them at the top. Yeah. You know, they, they, you ascend others with you, you know. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a question I like to ask everybody. On sure. There. If you can go back to any age in your life and give yourself advice, what age would it be and what would you tell yourself? Uh, you know, that's a real good question because I think about business immediately um, at 18, but... I almost want to say like the 15, 16, right before you start driving and, you know, <laughs> this is going to kind of, this is going to kind of come out of left field, but you know, when I was 15, 16, not that you're supposed to have beverages, you know, when you're 15, 16 years old at, at parties or gatherings, I would go back to 15, 16 year old me and just say, dive in, dive into life, you know, make the mistakes, you know. That way, you know, and and I've reached a good point. I mean, you know, at 26, then I've made, you know, mistakes genuinely can potentially cost you money or, you know, and lots of it and stuff like that. Don't be afraid to make the mistakes and and dive in. Don't, don't, uh, don't just walk away from every opportunity, you know, that just because it scares you or don't, you know, don't not go to a party or a gathering or an event that that you're just intimidated by just because you don't want to make a mistake. You know, that's, that's just, that falls in line with the same category of being 16 year old and going to a party that, you know, that you're going to be intimidated by because there's going to be a lot of people there and you, you know, you might mess up or, you know, or you might 
make a mistake, you know, that's, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, but in the same tune, when I was 16, 17, I didn't take an opportunity of a job interview or something because I was intimidated. Or, you know, or go to a conference, you know, in real estate because I was intimidated and I didn't want to just put yourself out there. Put yourself out there because you never know what's going to happen. That that's you said earlier. That's basically the summary just of that. Show up. Yeah, put yourself out there and don't don't be afraid to make mistakes because when you say you're an overthinker, because you are, 100. I can be too. The what do they call it? Analysis paralysis. Yeah. I try to minimize the mistakes as much as possible so I don't look foolish. You know, but it's okay to look foolish sometimes yeah. because. In that moment, you're going to learn three times fold than what you would do if you just tried to avoid it. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Yeah. That was, that was a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's wild, too, though, because, like, knowing you, and like, we, we were close throughout high school, I feel like, but we weren't, I, I don't feel like, like, hanging out and, like, doing, like, that whole nine yards. And, like, sure. But, like, knowing you now versus then, like, you'll show up anywhere now. Yeah. You'll be, yeah. You'll be the first one there. I will. I will. Shaking hands. Yep. 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 So, yeah, and that come through growth and mistakes and, and different things. So, you know, I wish I would have started. Eat. I'm already at a. I can't complain. You know, humbly saying I, I'm at a good place with my business and everything at such a young age, and I have to remember that. And so are you. I mean, we have to remember. Like, we do these things and we surround ourselves by people that are older than us. We read these books that are written by people older than us with much success, and that's what we want tomorrow. We still have to remember, man. We've got a whole life ahead of us. I'm 26. You're are you, are you 26? Right? I'll be 26 next month. Yeah. See. Yeah. So you're still a young cat. You're 25. Well, <laughs> you know. So I mean, we still have to remind ourselves of that. And so you know, when it comes to making mistakes and stuff like that and learning, like That's the only I, way I didn't even learn. start that and making mistakes and stuff like that. I was like 20, 21. You know, if I would have even started like back when I was 16, 18, who knows? Who knows where I'd be? In a better place or a worse place? I don't know. You know, or, but. Right where you're supposed to be. Uh, right where I'm supposed to be. Yep. So it's just because, and I could keep going on, but it, because society teaches that too in social media, you know, not to be a fool, not to, you know, you fit in, fit in. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you need to do this. You need to dress this way. You're, if you want to go to this state, you got to look like this. You got to believe this. Yeah. You know, every society teaches you to fit in, you know, and obviously it's coming full circle around more and more year by year, but, you know, no. Don't we're, we're all extremely unique as individuals and it's like I feel like people are striving to be somebody that they're not sure and it's not I don't feel like necessarily an intentional thing sure you know, it's not like this isn't who exactly I want to be I want to be like this person but I, like you said the society driven things and I feel like that there is a turn happening turn yeah <laughs> inside joke uh, <laughs> but like I, I, I root that back to like the COVID time frame like when that happened it was just it was a split. Two things can happen. And sure. It's like you can either start focusing on yourself or continue on the same rotational path. Sure. I yeah. Mean, I mean, prime example of that is, you know, um, is me and Andrew, you know, Andrew Earl, me and my business partner, shout out Andrew Earl. But, um, you know, we align our values and the way we conduct business in such a similar way. And some people have kind of taglined us as like, you know, business bros or whatever, you know, and at the end of the day, I mean, we are so authentic that, I mean, you're either in or you're out and, yeah. and we'd love to have you in, you know, but well, we're going to keep doing our thing. You know, but we're going to keep yeah. doing our thing. Yeah. And so when I, quick story, when I turned 21, I, we, me, I met my wife after uh, she was in nursing school. I met her for lunch at Jonathan's, right? And shout out Jonathan's. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Johnny's. But, um, I had a small uh, cocktail. I think, it, I think it was my Red Bull vodka or something like that at that's lunch. Pretty small. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a small cocktail, right? But uh, and she took a picture for Instagram or something like that for her story, like yeah, the classic, yeah, yeah, you yeah, see meeting, it all the time. yeah, meeting, meeting, you know, my man for lunch or blah blah blah. And I was like, no, 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 don't post that, don't post that. I don't want people thinking like I'm having a, you know, because I wasn't getting drunk or anything like, midday. Well, but, but I'm not working. But I'm not working or I'm having a drink in midday, you know. And, you know, she actually got upset about that. She's like, just because she was even trying to push me. She's like, who cares? Just yeah. be yourself. Yeah. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, I'm already, I'm trying to get out of the bow tie boy era. I'm trying to, like, be more professional, you know, stuff like that. Look back at it now. I want everyone to join me for happy hour. Like, you know, let's, you know, like I, I need to be who I am, yeah. you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So 
that's a prime example of that. It just come in full circle, you know. So, just you have to be who you are, and that's especially when it comes to business, you know. Well, I think you do that well. <laughs> Try. You like mm. Try well, to. Go ahead and start getting close to wrapping up. I'm going to give you this this piece. All right. right here. If you would like to go ahead and open it up. Sure, sure. Absolutely. I've had a couple of people not open it. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Thank it goodness is already it's already open. Yeah, yeah. open. We struggled with that. Because I would have struggled with it, yeah. It's like... Absolutely. I mess this card, card, as always. Love it. Absolutely. I do feel like you'll be a fan of the colors. Ooh, I can already kind of see a sneak peek. Woo, look at that. Monster, Love it. Monster, oh. Shout out Monster Energy. Shout out Monster <laughs> Energy. Amp sign and lighting. Yeah, Eric everything, yeah. Yep. Former employee. You know, so, dude, I love that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love that, man. I've got a, remember, I've got a long sleeve version of this from years back. So I, I actually love having this t-shirt now. Nice. And, yeah. And of course, they are slightly different. You know, that, that print comes out a little different. You know? Sure. Sure. But, I love that. Thank you. Hey, you'll rock it. Appreciate you'll it. Rock it. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in. Never forget that you are worthwhile. Always strive to be the best version of yourself, whether it's a hard time or easy time remain in the middle. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Worthwhile Spotlight. Our goal is to motivate people to become the best version of themselves possible through the power of storytelling. Our stories are written by the things that we experienced growing up, and these experiences, negative and positive, shape who we are and what we stand for. The beautiful thing about your story is that you get to decide how it's told. So as a diamond in the rough of life, hang tight and let your light shine bright.